another episode of 72 Pink Connector. With me this week, we have Tom. And that's it, just Tom. Really the only co-host you need on this entire show. Yeah, so uh, this week, uh, Tom and I will be... Yeah, we'll be talking. And that's the show. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. So go to our YouTube, our Twitter, our Twitch, and yep. uh, peace out, y'all. Yeah, see ya. Nah, but hey, so what the fuck you been up to this week? Uh, I actually, I played some video games. Um, and and I, I, got, I got a new toy here. So, so as you can see, let me, let me disconnect yeah. this guy. Look, look at I that. I like this toy. Look at that. So um, for those of you on the non-video medium... For those of you who can't quite see this, um, this is a 8-bit though new eight, or gamepad. I don't know what they're actually calling this one, but the it's the SF30 Pro. It is modeled after the SNES controller with uh, a couple notable additions, two really nice um, joysticks, very nice, very uh, yeah. PlayStation 2 feeling. Or yeah. With only indented though, which is nice. I love the indent. Indented top so your thumbs don't slip off. Yep. So it's got the gripped sides and the indented top. So you can either play it, you know, holding center or doing edge maneuvers. Yeah. Which I, I know is important to some people. Yeah. Actually, uh, one of my coworkers, I don't think he plays a lot of games. I was watching him play Forza. He was actually like pressing the joystick. He wasn't like putting his thumb on it and pulling it huh. around. He was actually pressing it. Yeah, I, I know some people do that. I don't play it that way, but... Uh, Feels barbaric to me. Yeah, I get it. And then also, you have both bumpers and, quote-unquote, triggers on yes. this controller. So this is a fully functioning 360-style PlayStation yeah. 2 controller. Yeah, basically. With the addition for the Switch of a home button and a screenshot button, but they're labeled as a star and something else. Yeah. Yeah, a star and a logo. Um, so I, I previously did on, on our YouTube, you can actually check this out, um, a hardware review of the, uh, I think it's the NES 30 Pro, uh, their older style controller of this uh, variety, but it had some major design issues. Uh, it was a great controller, uh, but some things really pissed me off. So their their buttons were all in a single row. Their their uh, shoulder buttons and their triggers were all on one row. So to press the triggers, you had to you know kind of like get a claw grip going on the controller to go around the shoulder buttons. It was it was really uncomfortable, uh, and the analog sticks were too tiny. What's cool about this is it's got rumble, it's got a gyroscope in it, so you can do all the motion controls that the Switch needs, um, and it hooks to everything. Not only is it a standard Bluetooth controller that you can use with your phone or whatever, um, it'll also emulate uh, an Xbox 360 controller, so it'll work anywhere those work, which is just about everywhere, um, and it'll hook directly to the Nintendo Switch as a pro controller. Uh, this is my preferred method of playing the Switch on the couch now. I yeah. really, really like this. I dig this controller. I don't think that would be my preferred for like at home gaming. Um, also, it just, I don't know how to explain it. The Pro controller just feels so good in your hands. That's my big thing. It does I have feel the good. Pro, so I want to use the Pro. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's something about going from the, the nice curved body controller to, you know, a, a flat brick like the old school controllers. Um, but uh, I, I gotta say, I love this. I've been playing uh, a bunch of classic games with this. I've been playing the Switch with this. Um, it's 50 bucks, it's USB-C, it's wireless, it's got a rechargeable battery, all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, it's awesome. I like it. Yeah, I'm um, really, really going to possibly get one of those for traveling, like airplane. It's really big. Um, Tom's face keeps pointing over, what's up? Uh, no, I, I just, I see a note here that Tom's face is gone, and I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Your I, pop filter's in your face. I, I, I see my face. I can, I can do, I can sort of angle this way, like that. But yeah, either way. Um, I think that, would, for me, would spice really well for travel, and that'd be about it. That said, that's really nice, though. So. I take it everywhere. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, so yeah other than that anything fun happened for you this week um as far as like the general week goes not not a whole lot um it's been pretty uneventful um i did get a lot of gaming in though nice yeah like yeah. what played some overwatch uh played some vr stuff i uh, had had uh the family come out and the kids had and these are like kids between the ages of 10 and 15 so when i say kids it's like you know tiny almost adults 
um, they had never played a VR system before. So I, I got to introduce them to the Vive, their first ever VR experience, and they loved it. Uh, they actually ended up, uh, I've got like this paper screen in front of my computer to block the sun. Uh, they punched that like two or three times while playing Gorn. Uh, it was a great experience. Um, and uh, apparently my, my little sister, she tore some dude's head off in Gorn, lifted it up as it was... Uh, dripping blood and said behold the holy beverage as she held it over her head so um yeah yeah great success so uh your family is noted as i like, can't own gun people right please, um, please? either they already have them so okay so yeah, avoiding you know. that at all cost yeah so that was that was cool i'm um, continuing to love the hell out of the five um you know, I what? It's been about a year since I had it. No, you've had yours over a year because I've had over my I've had mine over a year. Yeah, okay. I still love it. Every time I play it, it's it's fucking magical. So for me, it is something where there's not enough there. I when I am in it and playing it, I enjoy the hell out of it. But it's not something that there's a lot of things I go and play on. That's the only thing for me is like, yeah, th there's a few really good like um, the labs, excellent job simulator excellent but i um, actually do not i i can't say i don't like job simulator um i played it through and i was done with it yeah yeah absolutely it's yeah I, I never go back. back to yeah but the lab i'll go back to you know every couple of weeks the lab there's only one that i will always keep playing and the, that's the, the archery yes yeah oh it's so good it's so good so for those of you who don't know this, there's a tower defense game in the lab where there's all these stick figures storming your castle and you have a bow and arrow and you're just picking them off and they have shields and helmets and all this stuff. But it's really fun and gets really tiring for your arm because for anyone who's done anything like holding your arm out for an extended period of time, when you hold your arm straight out for about 15 minutes, it gets a little, little tight. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit. Uh, I, I love hollow point. I love dodging, uh, I guess, lasers and using a bow and arrow, and that's fun. Gorn is just amazing. Uh, I, I beat the game. Uh, they're still making content for it. It's not a finished game like most VR products. Um, but now I have the ability to do custom games where you can actually make your player huge. So if you wanted to like go pick up and throw dudes like... like uh, action figures you can totally do that uh you can also turn on spooky mode which turns them into skeletons so like there's just all these different shaped skeletons and size skeletons running around basically yeah <laughs> yeah can it's, you like actually pick apart their bones then or is it still work like the regular structure it, it works like the regular the regular people damn that'd be awesome like you just start pulling be. out rib bones and stuff what's cool though is that you can see their hearts inside of the skeletons so if you're trying to get those cool stabs where you tear the dude's heart out you can do that way easier because you have a target pretty cool using the heart as a target I see yeah what you're doing yeah um I had, a, I had a fun moment where I, uh, I chopped a dude's arm off. Another guy swung a big-ass hammer at me, shattered my shield in my hand. So I picked up his buddy's arm and beat him to death with it. It was nice. wonderful. Um, other than that, uh, I played A Hat in Time, which is a game that Josh got me. Uh, I'm really digging A Hat in Time. Um, it's, it's difficult, though. Um, it makes me think of... 64 era platformers like yes. your banjo your donkey kong your conquer absolutely the the issue i have with a hat in time is that it exists in the same time that mario odyssey does so i'll go and play the greatest platformer ever made which is mario odyssey uh and i'll sit down I'm like oh fuck yeah hat in time it's got you know a cool groovy soundtrack the levels are interesting uh the gameplay is is fun the controls are they're okay they're not great uh the camera is kind of dog shit at, at most times and after about 10 minutes of playing a hat in time i have to force myself to keep playing it because i just want to play mario yeah, you see, I'm the other way around. If there's a game that I start playing and I feel I have to force myself to keep playing it, unless it's at the beginning. At the beginning, I will fight through a game because I realize a lot of games, the front's loaded with shit that's kind of bad. 
But if I'm two hours, three hours in, and I still feel myself forcing through it, I'll just stop playing. There's no need. Yeah, it's it, it really it's of no fault of the game itself, other than there's a better game out there. Um, other other than the camera issues, the camera issues, especially in a platformer, is a death knell to the entire genre. And somehow, after all of this time with 3D platformers, we still don't have a camera that works quite as good as the Mario games. Well, because I mean, 3D platforming is a dead genre. It really is. It, well, you, you say that, but we've had a bunch of high-profile 3D platformers come out recently, right? Recently. Ukulele, A Hat in Time, Mario Odyssey. Uh, I mean, that shit's coming back. Yeah, but you've only really named two big the name Crash, ones. Crash Bandicoot came out. Okay, I'll See? give that. But Ukulele was actually renowned as like, no, this, this isn't... This is exactly what it said it was going to be, and it's exactly what happens with Nostalgia. You tell yourself you want this, and then when you get exactly what you think you want, it's not quite as good as you remembered it. So I heard Ukulele was the first world was amazing. It was fantastic. It was a master's class in how to create a vibrant, colorful, alive world that your players want to get sucked into. And everything after the first world was shit. Yeah, I heard it was just the same thing over and over again, much like that era platformers were. It's just fetch. Get this, fetch, get that. But it's yeah. just the genre as a whole. Mario is the only reason that genre is still viable. I I disagree. I just I I don't think there's been any huge innovation in the genre since uh, Galaxy, really, because Mario Odyssey doesn't do anything innovative in the platforming space at all. Yeah, uh, it's it's really just the platform, the three D platformer perfected. Right. Yes. The, the last big innovation was Galaxy. Yes, I, I would 100% agree with that. Because, well, let's be honest. How much different stuff can you do with the platformer? I mean, you have well, Paper Snake Mario. Pass. Snake Pass. Have See, you seen I this? I don't consider that necessarily a platformer. It's, That's, it's technically a platformer without jumping. Yes, but it's more of a puzzle-solving game. Kind of, sort of. It's, it's like, it's the portal to... Doom, right? It's it's the puzzle version of an existing genre, right? They took the first person shooter and they said, let's do something puzzly with it. Um, and Snake Pass said, let's take the platformer and do something puzzly with it. And you ended up with a platformer where you couldn't jump. Um, I I think there's still life in the genre. I just don't think people are, are thinking about it in real innovative ways. M Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge was fantastic. It was a first person platformer. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you Mirror's Edge. Um, and then they tried it again, and they realized that well, once you've done it once, oh, damn, what do we add to no, it? No, no, that's, that's not what happened with the second one. The second one was an open-world game, and what made Mirror's Edge great was these uh, the levels were perfectly pieced together with multiple paths on a linear track, right? You can't can't build levels like that in an open world, or at least it's extremely difficult to do. So they built this open world, and you had one or two paths, but you couldn't really go outside those bounds because it was open, right? Well, they went open world because that was the time when everyone's like, hey, you're going to make a good yeah. game. You need to do open world. Yeah. And honestly, let's be, what were they going to add to Mirror's Edge? Granted, I say that, and it's, yeah, they probably could have came up with something interesting. But if you can pull off a Mirror's Edge open world, that would be fucking awesome. Parkour that would be, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, that'd fucking be great. Everywhere. But they couldn't do it. So I, I do think, I don't think the platformer is a dead genre. Uh, I think that uh, there are nuggets of innovation that are pretty few and far between. But it's, I mean, look five-ish years ago at the first-person shooter, right? Everyone was experiencing FPS fatigue. Every single game was an FPS game. And I, I'm pretty sure we're going to get to that point with Battle Royale games. Which is still an FPS, though. Ever Sort of. I'm going to go ahead and say in the main spotlight, for the hardcore gamers, it's been this way yeah. since Rogue Sphere and Counter-Strike and that kind of stuff. But since Halo and then Modern War, or I'll actually I'll go back and say maybe Call of Duty 2, shooters have been the one of probably the most dominant genres since. I, I would argue since Doom. The original? Yeah. I wouldn't say that it was necessarily the most because at that do, point do you remember, platformers were super strong then. They they were, but uh yeah, I, I guess that's true. The platformer was the dominant genre because uh the majority of your gamers at that time were 
kids. Yeah, Mario, Sonic, um, Croc. And, yeah, I was gonna say things. Bubsy three D. All right, that's the show. Yeah, fuck that. Um, but yeah, that's where like the FPS really started to take off, and it's still got a strong grasp. Yeah. And you've seen genres like the platformer and the RTS, which have really went by the wayside. I think the RTS is still getting some really cool innovations, but people don't care as much. Whereas the platformer, people are easier to jump into and they're just not getting the innovation. Yeah, I, I will say, as a total aside, I totally prefer turn-based strategy over real time. Every day. Yep. Oh, hell no, man. There's certain... Like, Age of Empires 3 had one of the most interesting hooks on an RTS I've ever done, where there was a meta game with this card game on top of your RTS. Which triple was triad? So, so fucking cool. I just love RTS. Totally triple triad. By the way, uh, somebody at work this week brought up Blitzball. I just want to throw out, fuck Blitzball. Really? Yeah. It's fucking awful. It's the worst thing ever. Okay. Yep. Just throwing that out there. Um... By the way, uh, new, new rule for our Discord. If you make a Blitzball channel, you're going to get insta-banned. Uh, other than that, speaking of Final Fantasy, I have, uh, have been going back to Final Fantasy VII. Did you just segue into Final Fantasy from a reference of Final Fantasy and it didn't actually happen? Yeah. Okay, making sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, Blitzball, Blitzball was uh, oh, minigame okay, in 10. Okay, yeah, 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 good call, good call. Yeah. When you said Blitzball, my mind automatically went to that game that amazon was making talking about oh no no that's breakaway breakaway okay no. yeah no yeah, no yeah. Blitzball is the 10 water dome sport yes game. exactly yeah. fuck blitzball also uh breakaway wasn't fun if it dobby never is really came out but he is going to explode on you yeah i know fuck his, blitzball that is his jam um but anyway i i started uh final fantasy 7 i've got a save file that i started last year sometime and i picked it back up putting about five or six hours into it um I, I like the story of Final Fantasy VII. It's not the deepest. Uh, it's certainly not the most accessible. They're, the writing could be better in retrospect. Um, but it's, it's fun. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fun it, story. It's an anime story instead of your almost traditional fantasy story. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the graphics, uh, looking back, I, I cannot believe everybody was so fucking impressed. And I will say, the, the pre-rendered backgrounds and the, the static 2D backgrounds in that game are pretty. Uh, but the character models are so, so bad, especially in the overworld. The gameplay character models are dreadful. Yes. But how does this, the cutscenes hold up still? Oh my god. So I, I actually got to a point, because you know it's a special moment in the early Final Fantasy games where you hit a, an FMV cutscene, right? Or a, a, a rendered CGI yeah, cutscene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I got to one, and it's so laughably bad. I was watching it. They, they run it about 10 frames per second. The, the characters are all weird. It, the it, Tifa one with all the flowers, did you get to that one? Um, no. No, yeah, I Because I, I, I know that one was when, back in the day when you saw this, like, oh, my yeah. God, this is vibrant. This is beautiful. Yeah. The way the sun is just, oh. And it looks so, so bad today. Like, it, it, honestly... It looks like uh, uh, Mist animated. Do you ever play Mist, the the puzzle I've never adventure played game it, but I've I've seen the pictures of it because when I got into the Witness, everyone's like, "It's it's the Mist." So I started looking at that. Yeah, yeah, it's. I, I it, they're so bad. They're they're so so bad. Um, and I I am playing this game, and it's goofy, and it's got some weird humor, and it's got some completely politically incorrect things that happen in it. That game can't. I want to know how they're doing the remake because they, there is things they can't do it. There is things being said and done in that game that if you do that now, man, you're gonna get torn the fuck apart. How how the fuck are are you going to have uh, a fun date? With with Barrett and Cloud, in in the the goddamn uh, Ferris wheel thing with the cross dress, yeah, and, and then the cross dressing and the like hooker zone area, like the honey bee whatever they are. I mean, that that game had some weird, raunchy, politically incorrect shit in it. That was great. It was fantastic and hilarious. Uh, and I have no idea how Square is going to do that today. Well, actually. Hopefully, we'll find out in the next year or two, but I'm at this point, I hold my breath on that. I, I gotta say, um, Final Fantasy VII 
does not take itself as seriously as people remember it, right? Like you, you watch Advent Children or you look at any modern, like through a modern lens, Final Fantasy VII, it's like super dark and dreary and it's basically Batman with a giant sword and he's just, you know, going full goth all over the place and super emo. And that's, that's not how Final Fantasy VII was at all. The, the story is fucking ridiculous. The end boss uses an attack that literally tears through planets in the solar system as it shows you this giant, you know, CGI cutscene to bring the sun down on you. So it's funny fucking thing, ridiculous. Funny thing about that boss. So that move is actually a percentage based move and he likes to use it a lot. So I was watching my buddy Red. It was the first time I've ever seen this game. I was watching him play it through. He was drastically underleveled, but he just had a fuck ton of items. And he gets to the point where he's used his last uh, Phoenix down and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, he has one health left on Cloud. Everyone else is dead. The boss uses, or he had two health, I think it was, uses that move. Doesn't kill him because it's a percentage-based move. Nice. He ends up beating it. <laughs> and then he looks up on the guide. He was something like 20 levels below what you're recommended to be Damn. in a fight. And it took him minutes because of all these damn potion stuff he just had to keep using. And I mean, the whole game isn't like hilarious, right? But there is a ton of levity and a ton of funny moments in that game that, that people just gloss over. They think it's all, you know, people crying and, and horrifying backstories, but it's not. It's, it's a funny game. There is one moment in that game that sets the tone in everyone's mind for all the future because that one moment was such a oh fuck. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's why I think that tone is that is because yes that moment was fucking brutal it was like tear jerking oh yeah that, that I think overpowers the goofiness that was all throughout the game yeah I could see that it, it also um, probably doesn't give birth but it's probably the best example of uh, mechanics not lining up with, with a story right so your characters fall down and die and, and you, you phoenix down them and they're, they get right back up <clears throat> They are perfectly fine. Uh, but a moment happens in the story in why don't you just Phoenix down? But why not just pop a couple items? Right. I feel like I I'm trying to avoid spoilers on a game that's like 20 don't, years old at this don't point. Don't spoil this game because it's going to be coming back out and you have kids yeah, that know. weren't even born when that game was I out. I know. Uh, Cloud Mary's Dumbledore. Yes, yes. And um, Wild is the dude with the big sword for those of you who would probably be a spoiler you probably need to know who and he is barrett is his father and red is their dog yes yes no but um I'm telling you it's a sitcom i need to go back and play that game again. it's it's good it's a lot of fun um i i will say uh the port that i have on steam is dog shit it is horrible. You're not supposed to tell me that because that's what I have too. Yeah, I know. It's bad. It's bad. Square does not know how to make PC games at all, ever. Uh, which I was looking at Final Fantasy 15 and I was like, oh, I, I so wanted to go through this. But Square put out a PC game. I don't know if I can pay full price for this. I haven't heard bad things about 15 on the PC. Near, there was some performance 15's issues. 15's not out yet on the PC. Okay, okay. That would be why I haven't heard it then. Yeah. Because I know it's, well, it's been out for nine months now at this point uh um, no that came out last year came yeah last year but yeah so either way when that comes out i wouldn't because near had some performance issues but it was still very playable yeah so the the last uh the most recent square game i've played on pc was final fantasy 13 and it was honestly one of the worst ports i have seen since dark souls you sure it was the port not just the game I mean, the game was bad, too, but the port, <laughs> well, you could tell technical issues were bad in the port. I say they, they made that switch in, uh, what was it, Final Fantasy XII is when they finally said, okay, we're kind of going real-time, turn-based. Yeah. And, I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's just, when I went to Final Fantasy, that was the, well, it's still an uh, Eastern game, but the Western version of Dragon Quest. Because I love yeah. Dragon Quest games, and that is the more easily accessible version. Oh, that brings up a, a good point. Uh, so, I hate turn-based combat. There's no way to make it interesting. There's no way to make it fun. I've never seen 
uh, anyone do good turn-based combat in an RPG? Because I literally sit there and spam attack or spam magic. You ready to um, maybe backtrack a little bit? Maybe. Pokemon. Even still, even still, I, I do not like turn-based combat. So I, I think it can be done well, and Pokemon's probably the best example of that system. I just don't think it's engaging at, at all. I, I'm going to hit a button, and nothing happens. You would hate the games I like, then. I like a lot of games where it's the strategy of what, and you let someone else, something else executes it, but it's the strategy of what you're doing, uh, not I, how you do it. I, I want them to, to get rid of all the all the stuff around turn-based combat, right? If I'm going to have turn-based combat, I want it to work at line speed. I want, I want to hit attack, and I want to see, yes, instantaneously, I've done this much damage. Okay, it's the enemy's turn. They instantly do this much damage. I really just want a combat text log scrolling as I make choices. Well, that's how I do. I don't I want do. animations. I don't want music. I just want white text on a black background. That's how I do Pokemon is I turn off all the animations. So it's still a little delayed, but it's like, okay, you attack, flash, hit. They attack, flash, hit, yeah. miss. Yeah. And, and really, so when... Final Fantasy VII has so much damn downtime. I, I was battling this boss, uh, you know, over, over the weekend when I was playing this, and it just drug on. I didn't make that many moves. I didn't choose attack that many times, but it just drug on and on and on because I had to attack, and then he attacks, and both of us wait for our gauges to fill back up, and then we do the same dance all over again, and then both of us sit around and, like, make googly eyes at each other, and... <sighs> the worst thing about that game is the spell system because all the fucking animations around that take forever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Knights of the Round? Oh my god. You, you choose Knights it of the Round. It's cool to watch once or twice. Yeah. And then yeah. I, I love that in newer Final Fantasies, you can do summons and you can hit a button and skip everything. It goes right to the game. Don't make me hit the button. <laughs> Just give it as an option. Yeah. Just tick the box. You know, show me Knights of the Round for, for 27 minutes while... You know, after, after I cast like, it, oh, I that, need that's, the, a, that's a checkbox. I need a drink. Please show me Knights of the Round animation. Yeah. Go to the kitchen, get a drink. Come back, finish watching it. <laughs> yeah, finish watching it for 10 minutes. But yeah, uh, I've been playing that. Um, a guy at work bought a 1080 Ti, brand new graphics card, uh, and with it in the box was Destiny 2. Uh, which is, that's that's nice. I like getting games with graphics cards. It's, it's, cool. it's a good little thing. Like, hey, you're spending six, seven, eight hundred dollars for yeah. the game. The the last time I bought a new graphics card, I believe I got uh, Watch Dogs. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, me too. Uh, really, they should have uh, they should have paid me to take the game. The, um, the last time I mm -hmm. did was the new Hitman, and I gave it away thinking, oh, I'm not a big Hitman guy. And, it, it wasn't bad. And then I found out that, dude, that Hitman game is probably the best Hitman game ever made. Yeah. Like, I, I never got into Hitman. I thought it was a little convoluted, uh, but I did play through. I forget what it is. It wasn't Absolution. It was uh, the one before it. Um, but it was good. It was fun. Um, in, in watching Video Game Donkey's videos, though, I realized that the can of expired spaghetti sauce is the best weapon in the game because you can punch people with it and throw it. Well, you see, I missed the whole ticket on this where I thought Hitman was a serious game. And everyone I'm hearing that plays it a lot knows it's like, no, no, th this game is like kind of tongue in cheek, be goofy. It's have fun with the systems on how you kill the people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's. There, there are some things that I wish were more interactive in Hitman games, but it is really cool to play a level and go through it six or seven different ways, and it's totally different every single time. And on the newest one, what they did is they had these temporary contracts that would come up for a week. Oh, so you, drop, you had Absolution. They would drop them into the map. Yeah. And it's like, hey, have at it. And the cool thing, I will say this real quick, it was a news from a while ago we didn't actually say. Um, mm. Since Square dropped them, they still have the license, and they're still actually going to be adding. Oh, so the nice. game isn't dead. Nice. Which is really, really nice because that game, like some, well, Giant Bomb, I love listening to it. That was up there for their game of the year last year. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard uh, good and bad things about it. The, the good thing is that it does keep the game fresh, keeps you playing, you know, even a little bit every week to see the new stuff. Uh, the downside is, you know, it's, it's a 
holidays, right? We we can't always go back and jump into Hitman. And if we want to kill, I, I know Gary Busey was one of the contracts in there. If we want to kill Gary Busey and we get busy or something that week, uh, Super Bunny Hop made this exact argument. He's gone. He's gone forever. There's no way to go back and murder Gary Busey with a can of spaghetti sauce. You see, I kind of like that, though, because other games do this and no one really bats an eye too much when they do holiday events. Once the holiday's yeah, gone, it's that's, gone. It's that's the true. Same thing. Well, yes and no. So uh, for um, Overwatch, the Halloween event, I unlocked Halloween skins from the last Halloween event. And I didn't play that one. No, but you one. had to play this one. So if you're not yes. on for the events... Yeah, you, you do miss it until the next year. So, I mean, that's, in that's theory, true. they can run those contracts again. It's just you have yeah. to play it when it's available. The other side of this, though, is that it's a single-player game, right? So you are missing single player content. Well, it's added. It is literally the living added. Hey, yeah. you know what? We've already made this game and released it. We're just gonna have fun with it here. I, I wish. I wish though, like you could, you know, pay a buck or two or something to bring back old contracts if you miss one. That that would be nice. That would be an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure people would bitch about that too. Anyway, um, yeah. So uh, Destiny. Yes, Destiny. Uh, I I got Destiny two from this guy. Uh, Why well, he didn't. Uh, redeem the game uh, is he had bought Destiny 2 at launch and already you know max leveled and everything else um, I don't know how I feel about this um, it feels like uh, the, the gameplay feels like Halo uh, which isn't a bad thing at all uh, Halo with better PC control uh, so that's that's nice that's well that's welcome uh, I like the grenades the loot system feels a little bit borderlandsy uh, do not get attached to any gun. You'll throw it away in 10 minutes, um, which, is, which is great. It keeps things interesting. And you learn real quickly what works for you and what doesn't uh, and what you want your loadout to be. That's the thing I always loved about loot-based games is especially ones that kind of churn through it, like the loot porn kind of thing, yep. where, yeah, you know, try this. Eh, I'll get this one. It has a better number. I'll try this. Oh, fuck. I don't like this. I'll take the lower number. Yeah. And you, like you said, you get a feel that way. Like Borderlands, I found out, man, I really like snipers. I chose a class that is terrible with snipers. Yeah. I really like snipers. Um, it, it also shares the worst part of MMO design. Um, I, this game wants to have it both ways. It wants to be a, a big, bombastic first-person shooter, but at the same time, it wants to be an MMO. And when you build an MMO, you make a lot of trade-offs, right? Your enemy types aren't particularly interesting. You, you've got the big standard archetypes, and then everyone else has palette swaps on that same character model. Um, the, the guns are fun, but there's nothing particularly differentiating about the styles of guns. Uh, so in Borderlands, you know... Um, one company's guns are entirely different than another company's guns, yeah. right? Um, it, which makes it really interesting and, and, and actually adds something to the world. Um, the world in Destiny doesn't, at least in the six or seven hours I've put into it so far, there's no world that I care about, right? The, the story tries to be really interesting, but it name drops a bunch of people and events from the first game, which it, they never go into. Uh, they say, you know, oh, hey, here's this guy. And everyone's like, oh, my God, it's back. And oh, no, they're taking the weird planet thing called the Traveler. What are we going to do? I'm like, well, this would mean something if you had any backstory. But you don't. So I'm just literally watching them, you know, capture a weird moon thing that just hangs out. Yeah. I, I have no frame of reference. I have no context. And the game doesn't give that to me. Yes, I could go watch a Let's Play of Destiny. Yes, I can go do all the reading and research online. But for somebody brand new that's trying to get in on the ground floor of your hype-based game, this is a really shit way to introduce your story to me. Also, keep in mind, Destiny 1 was known for not really having much story. Yeah. And this game, they tried to add more, but even then, everything I've heard is this game doesn't start until you beat the story. Yeah, which... Which really, is just how a lot of MMOs are. Yeah, yeah, that's it's true. But I was never the guy to play MMOs in that way. 
right um i would i would level up a character all the way i might run through a you know an end game raid once or twice but i'm not going to sit there and grind for the you know the pauldrons of glory or whatever yeah then this isn't for you yeah i i, I am the guy that will do that with borderlands we would do terramorphous on end to get certain drops we would do the berserker dude we would feed the bugs to other bugs to get the invincible bug yeah so i mean i've i've put plenty of hours doing that kind of shit. Yeah, I, I don't I, I like the end game content as a thing, and I get that there are players who base, you know, their entire gameplay, uh, their their entire way of playing games around end game content. And that's great. That's all well and good. Uh I've never been that guy, and honestly, I wouldn't own Destiny 2 had it not been free. Had it not been given to me. I I like the game. It is a well made game in certain aspects. It is a very lazily made game in others. And it feels like um, Bungie said, well, you know, we're not going to have a bunch of enemy types and we're not going to differentiate our, our weapons uh, except for stats. And we're, we're not going to give you any sort of clues about the story because MMO and that's their go to excuse for this is don't worry about it. MMO and where they could have made something really cool and really engaging uh, because these are the guys that came up with the stories for Halo 1 and some parts of halo 2 right um it they could make really engaging really deep shit that that is you know had been unseen in a game of this magnitude or genre mixing style uh but they didn't they relied on excuses yeah but to be honest for that game i don't care i almost still pulled the trigger when i saw it for 25 I've been holding out for Anthem, and EA is making me feel worse and worse about holding out for that. The only redeeming quality is the old head writer of Bioware is still the head of the game. Yeah, I, at the same time, I don't know if I could ever pull the trigger on a brand new EA property. I just, I don't know if I would trust it enough. I'm willing to try it off of the promise of what that trailer showed. I, I understand what I'm saying there, and I understand um, the risk of it. Unless they've got the same actors, the the same video game actors that uh, that them and Ubisoft share. Like, I don't know if I can play it. Dude, it I, I need looks... I need like a mystery science theater style style uh, game chatter going on. I under, I understand, but it I mean, it was so cringy. The, the, the chatter, it was I don't so care cringy. About. Watch it on mute though. What's going yes, on, on in you, that trailer is beautiful. fucking awesome. It looks great. The maneuverability through the map is amazing. But it's EA. And what they've just proven with Star Wars is worrisome to me because if they lock... I mean, outside of... It's a living game. So outside of your expansions and... Yeah, which you're, I'm gonna, totally fine. Totally fine. I understand in this type of game, I bitched about it with Destiny because it happened so quick. Yeah. But I understand in this kind of game, 60 bucks for the game, that first year, I'll probably spend 40 more. And then the next year, if they're still doing rapid development, I'll probably drop another 60 because of all like yeah. three new expansions that year. Back in the day, I bought World of Warcraft expansions. I've, I've paid for Guild Wars expansions. Um, you know, I have no issues with paying for continued development of a game, even, even with a, a monthly subscription fee, if the game is worth it. I did it for World of Warcraft because it was. Destiny, I'm not going to drop any money on this expansion. I could possibly with Destiny, but what I was, well, my thing was with the Anthem. I'm afraid that they're going to do that model. They're going to do cosmetics, which once again, yep. I'm okay with, but then they're going to do in-game real effect items. Yep. I can see them doing that. Yeah, absolutely. And if they do that, that would ruin the MMO. Yeah. Um, yeah, De Destiny, uh, it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. I'm going to get through the story. Um, I'm already blazing through it far faster than I thought I would have. Um, but if the end game is the whole game, I, I get it. But damn, I'm really glad I didn't pay money for this. You see, once again, it's, it's the style of play thing. But yeah, the one good thing I will say, you'll be able to experience it all. Initially, they had the issue a couple of weeks ago we talked about where they were locking content behind the DLC because, hey, you need to be this level to be in here. And to be this level, you have to be in the DLC. Yep. Uh, enough people bitched and they reversed course. Yes. Yes, they did. Um, I don't know how they thought that was a good idea to begin with. Yeah, I mean, for certain things, certain areas I can understand, but to completely gate an entire part of the game yeah. feels weird. Yeah, like they could, they could even, 
this is this is shitty design it's shitty for your players but they can make an area as hard as they want and have it fully unlocked say yeah sure you can get good you don't have to buy the expansion pack you don't have to get your expanded level cap you can try to beat them and keep smacking players down until they're forced to buy the expansion pack they could do that and it might be better received i think also part of the issue though was i think some of this was pvp zones yeah. Where I, I understand the idea of wanting to level, but at the same time, WoW got around this. And, and WoW, when you when you went to to go fight PvP stuff in an arena, you know it gated you with players of the same level. Well, and that's what I was going to say. They can do that, and I mean, for God's sake, COD, Halo, CS. Well, actually, CS:GO doesn't because CS:GO does something interesting. But they hopper their gameplay by what map packs you have. Yeah. And this game has enough players, you can do that. You're yeah. not going to worry about segmenting your player base when your player base is 300,000 at a given time. And let's not act like Bungie hasn't already figured this out because how many Halo map packs have they released? Yes. Also, I, I love it. Yeah, they yes. were great. Reduce I mean, it one was, when the next <laughs> one comes. <laughs> it was it's shitty uh, for, for their accounting department, uh, but, uh, but great for gamers because all you had to do was take that disc to your buddy's house and, hey, look, he's got a map pack. Well, and um, the way they did for Halo 3, the first one came out, okay, it's 10 bucks. Yeah. The second one came out, it's now 10 bucks. That first one, we understand it's old now, five bucks. Yeah. The third one comes out, the first one's now fucking free. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Uh, I... I think after Bungie stopped doing Halo, uh, they really lost something. I, I think I think they've they've got blinders on, and I think that's the fault of Destiny. I wonder how much Activision. Uh, I want to know how where the publisher comes in on forcing the living game model versus letting them do the living game model the way they want to. Yeah, that's true. And, and let's, I mean, yeah, let's split hairs. Activision is among uh, probably the the top of the evil publishers. Sure. Right? You've, you've got Ubisoft, you've got EA, you've got Activision. I don't even know if I put Ubisoft up there anymore. Ubisoft's been actually doing some pretty good stuff. I still hate you. Till they sunset you play, they're on my shit list. I won't hate someone for a launcher. But anyway, <laughs> we're getting down a... Uh, a dirt road we've traveled many times yeah so, so um, that's that's all i've played this week what have you played and actually um, actually you played you played a christmas game that i didn't get to see because my bus internet was terrible so yeah i'll start with that uh, i did uh 12 games of christmas this week it was my last one because i'll be out next week so i had to make sure to get that in um adam gave me a game called goner and um so i'll say this i know tom plays some roguelikes a little bit but I think by and large, when it comes to roguelikes, like Adam and I tend to play a lot of them. And Adam even more so than I. And Adam gifted me Goner, which is this rogue-based, purely run-based, rogue-based, rogue-like, rogue-based, run-based, <laughs> rogue, based Rogue-based, run-like, rogue, rogue-run. Noun-based, rogue-based. Yes. Okay. But no, it's, it's a rogue-like, runner, like run-based game. So you, uh, you start get a gun you get lives and then you just start killing people so you get to the end of the level and you don't have to kill them all but the thing you have to do kill five or in rapid succession and you get this little block then you kill five more in rapid succession you get another little block hmm. and those little blocks are currencies where once you get i think it's three or four levels in you run to a shop and then you buy an item that you permanently get the option to choose from this this game isn't like Isaac, Enter the Gungeon, where items stack. This is, you have a gun, choose which gun you want after you unlock one. You get a skull. One gives you like three hearts. One gives you five hearts. I don't understand the perk of having three instead of five, but I think maybe added damage or something. I don't know. And then you get a backpack. So you choose out of those, but that's it. Like Isaac is, pick this up, pick that up, pick this up, pick that up. It's all good. Yeah. So... In this, it was a struggle for me because it's really hard. Um, some of the mechanics are a little different, but work well. Like when you're on the wall, and you know some games when you wall jump, if you hold up against the wall, you slowly slide. Yeah. In this game, when you're holding left up against the wall, you're shooting to the right. Okay. Because you're up here and you're shooting like that. Yeah. Which makes sense. 
but in your hand, it's like this, this is not intuitive yeah. to my hand because I'm pointing left, but unless, I'm shooting right. Unless you are a classic Mega Man X gamer. Okay, but if that's all you've been playing <laughs> in the last decade and a half or whatever it's it, been. It is, it is. So it was really fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really simple game. Well, simple in gameplay wise. Very yeah. difficult. I got to this hell room once. It was only like the fourth level, and that's as far as I've ever gotten. Hmm. I was getting my ass handed to me. But it's a fun game. Um, check out the VOD if you're interested in it. Um, but yeah. Also, RS Gamer in chat's calling out uh, Dead Cells for a recommendation on Roguelike. I have heard lots of good shit about that. I have as well. And I really want to get that, but goddamn, my backlog's too big. If, uh, if any of you out there are interested in a Mega Man X-style roguelike, uh, I am still playing 20XX. Uh, I bought that for like a couple bucks. It was under five uh, during the last sale. I really enjoy it. I really, really like it. I was still stunned with how much that looks like Mega Man. It is. It looks, sounds, plays. It's got Mega Man. It's got uh, Zero. Uh, it's... It is so close to copyright infringement. It's scary. I was watching you play that, and I'm just thinking to myself, did, did a new Mega... Because this is before the, uh, what, 11 or whatever it is announcement. Yeah. I was like, did, did some new Mega Man come out that I don't know about? Or was there some weird port? Yeah. Nope. The only downside to 20XX is... Uh, so being a roguelike, you expect a wide variety of challenges, platforming enemies. Uh, there's not. There's not at all. Um, go in into 20XX uh, as a slightly randomized Mega Man game because the the pool of what they uh, you know choose their content from is very limited. Is what it seems like. Uh, I have seen you know in, in putting in less than ten hours into the game, I've seen the same content over and over and over again. It's not super super repetitive, but uh, you're guaranteed to see at least four or five set pieces that you saw last run. In in a single level, of which there will be eight. Yeah. Uh, it sounds a lot like how they do Risk of Rain. Where Risk of Rain, you have yeah. quadrants of a map, and a quadrant is a whole item. And then you roll which quadrants are there, and they all piece together. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's an interesting dude, way to do roguelikes, I likes, because it lets you still get familiarity with certain areas of it, but not rely on it completely, because there will be some tweaks. Yeah, I do like in 20XX, they do the uh, daily run option, which I am just a sucker for. I loved it in Isaac, and I love it here. I loved the idea in Isaac. I was shocked at how little I actually did. Really? Oh, that's like when I boot up Isaac at, at any point in time, that's the first thing I do. Daily run. Yeah, that, that has it. And um, another game I was playing today. Damn it. I just blanked. Oh, Splunky. I uh, booted up yes. some Splunky. I was playing some Splunky. Um, I do like Splunky. Well, Splunky, like it's it's seen as possibly one of the best roguelikes. Ever. Yeah, it's super it's so good. good. Um, I don't have my old save. I've never beat it. Um, I don't have my old save, so I had to start all over again. I think it's the third world once. Did you ever unlock any shortcuts? No. Ah. So there's multiple times when if you get so far, yeah. Okay. Fuck it. I can. See. Yeah. If you get so far. Uh, if you have enough money, you can buy a permanent shortcut to get start instantly at that area. Yeah. Which, there's upsides and there's downsides. Upside, you're just trying to beat the game. Downside, you don't have the cash from running all the previous. Yeah. So if you're not good and get there, it makes sense to do it, maybe. But at the same time, you're missing the potential of coming into that fifth level with better items. Yeah. But I love that game. That game's so fun. Um, It's... I want it on the Switch, damn it. I, there's a Splunky 2 has been announced. So with that being announced, I would be very shocked if that doesn't come over. Because that was on the Vita, I believe. And the Switch is the new gen Vita. It is taking up all the indies by storm. Everyone wants to be on the Switch because the fucking option rate of if you have a good game, it's getting sold on the Switch. Yeah. Um. So... He, he did say um, on Twitter, getting lots of requests for Spelunky on Switch. I have a Switch. It's awesome. Definitely want to put something on it. So I think you're right. I don't think it'll be Spelunky. I think it'll be two. 
Well, I could see them porting Splunky <clears throat> as a practice round. Like, okay, let's okay. let's get her fe- get our feelers out for the platform, and then yeah. when Splunky Two comes out, it's a PS4, Xbox One, yeah. Switch, P- all at once. Yeah, and it's it's so good if you are even remotely interested in. I guess it's a platformer. Yeah, I, I you, yeah, yeah, it's a platformer. It's a, it's a, yeah, yeah. So Spelunky, totally worth your money. It is so good, uh, and I, I would agree, one of the best roguelikes ever put out there. You know, I would say neck and neck with the Binding of Isaac. In my own book, I put Binding of Isaac as the top, but I, from a lot of respect to sources, well, you've got, I listen you've got to. a rogue like Zelda, and you've got a rogue like Mario. As long as you got those two, you're good. I'm just waiting for a roguelike excite bike. That would be fun. Yeah. Fun. Um, got me all excited because I love See? that game. Um, also, some stuff I've been playing. I want to get this one out of the way real quick. Uh, we did Terraria last week for our postcast game. Um, so since it's the first time we did it, it was a server from scratch. Anytime we go back to it going forward, we will just use this server. Um, that said... We got up to the first boss. Uh, we beat the first boss. Hmm. Um, yeah, it was a good time. We've got a lot of mine shafts. Uh, for people who've never played Terraria, think 2D Minecraft with more boss rush kind of features to it, where I feel the game has more progression, where Minecraft feels more freeform, do what you want. Where yeah. you can do that yeah. in... My, or Terraria feels like a game. Minecraft feels like a sandbox. Yes. And don't mistake that. Terraria is still sandboxy. Yeah. But there's enough content and storyline... Or not storyline, it's not the right word, but enough triggered events yeah. to make it feel like a game. Yeah. Well, because it is. I, I actually... I never got into Terraria, uh, mostly because... Uh, and, and I'm going to cross my fingers here. Because during that time that we have exited now, uh, it was everything had a crafting system. Everything was voxel based or pixel based. Everything was a fucking Minecraft clone. And I love Minecraft. I've probably put I've put at least hundreds of hours into Minecraft, but I fucking hated everything around that period of time because everything was trying to cash in on the magic. So I loved that genre. I loved everything about that. But my issue is um, that I got burnt because I was, I wanted it. I wanted that in sci-fi, not Starbound, but like legit 3D. There was this game called um, Starforge. It was a base builder. It was crafting. It was resource management. It was a horde defense where you had to put up turrets and everything. I'm like, dude, this sounds great. Early access. I was like, eh, it's on sale. I'll pick it up. God damn, it was awful. And there were so many games like that that just got hit by that. Um, actually, one, it wasn't awful, but Seven Days to Die. Um, hmm. When it first came out, from what I understand, it, it was one thing. And then you look at it now, and it is, it is grown. And I think they do that base building, crafting, management really well. Um, 72 PC... There's a big cluster of us here that play that. Uh, Dave, Bubbles, Bird. I think um, Josh has it too. So there's a, they have a big server going on that. And it's really cool the shit they're doing in that. But yeah, so um, Trigger was a postcast last week. This week, um, we are doing CSGO. Yeah. Everyone has it. Not everyone loves it because some people just suck at it. This guy. I was going to um, say, hmm. But it is a fun game. Uh, everyone has it. We are doing that tonight. We don't know how long we're going to be running it tonight, but we will be running some CSGO. So jump in the Discord after this. Let's shoot some fuckers. Yeah. Um, Remember, no ops. No, no ops. Um, also, on top of that, I was doing a little more Siege. Um, I'm still potato tier. I'm getting a little better potato tier, but I'm still potato tier. Um, Rocket League. I've been playing with a buddy of mine uh, who is newer to the game. He is someone whom I would say is a, like, it sounds weird, a good gamer. Like, he, he adapts to games well. He picks them up quick. He's great at shooters, all that kind of stuff. He was struggling pretty much, or pretty mightily on um, Rocket League. Really? He's, he's starting to get it now, but he would always just like, man, this is hard. Man, this is hard. 
the controls or was he was he trying to like emulate you or adam or, or dobby no or? he was even just playing with his own tier and okay. i've played with him a few times he's definitely i think more ambitious than what his tier is but it's still just funny to me where that game is so much different than a lot of regular video game skills as someone who is like well depth and like quick thinking and problem solving of dota and fast twitch of shooters still doesn't adapt as quick to that okay which i think is kind of interesting yeah well rocket league is more physics based than dota or shooters right you you have to have a real handle on the car mechanics how it falls the gravity interplay the way the specific way you hit the ball uh and which car you're using because that all yes. all affect your hitbox how to fly how to do air dribbles like i i, I I know enough about Rocket League to know that I am still a scrub. I know enough to know about that I suck. But yes, it's um, it's weird. I honestly thought the game was going to intimidate him away. He's, he's stuck it through. He still thinks it's hard. But I'm curious to see if this actually pushes him away. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I, and really interesting because I always considered Rocket League one of the most accessible online games. Yeah, and I thought so too, but his competitive nature, I think, is what's driving that. Oh, uh, okay, so he wants to get good and get good fast, and Rocket League is something you gotta work on. Yes. It takes a lot of practice, which is why I'm still trash. <laughs> I, don't, I don't play Rocket League. I play it with you guys, occasionally. But most of the time, I sit there in your Rocket League chat and play Destiny or whatever else. Yeah, because we're pretty chill. And then, I have one more thing I played. <clears throat> Um, and this game is fun. It's when you can see how much of an asshole your friends are. <laughs> Ultimate Chicken Horse. Um, I brought this up once before in the cast. Quick recap. It's a platformer where you get a start and you get a finish. Get there. Okay. Beginning, and it's round based. So every round, get there. If you get there, you get the points for getting there. If you don't, you don't. The little wrinkle is, okay, start of round one. Everyone pick an item. Put this somewhere on the map. These items could just be a piece of wood that you have to jump over or a piece of wood that when you're jumping, you have to try to get between the platform and the piece of wood. Or it could be a crossbow that will kill you. Or it'll be a mortar launcher that will kill you. It'll be a moving platform or barbed wire and you just start making this obstacle course. And the objective is make it hard enough to kill your people you're playing with, but still yet you can do it. So you'll see where when someone gets the lead, They'll intentionally make it almost impassable to try to prevent you from being able to get there. Nice. So it gets really fun. Um, the first time I played it, it actually, we, it was impossible to beat one of the levels because everyone was an asshole and blocked everyone in. <laughs> but it's, it's a super fun game. If you like platformers, if you like competitive, like couch-based competitive style games, that's what this is. It's great at it. And it does the um, Zoom... Of the screen to where you can do it on the same piece or same hmm. like the same system because it does that whole scale out thing like smash does yeah so you can get multiple people on it and it feels like a game that you should just be all on a couch bitching at each other about oh wow so it's nine bucks right now 40 percent off currently uh it ends after the weekend yeah it's super good game i think it came out last year so i mean it's still a newish game that's really cool hey you can buy the soundtrack um, nah, I wouldn't, but it's not bad. But yeah, it's super, <laughs> super fun game. But really, that's, that's pretty much been it for me. The Rocket League took up a lot of time. It does. Yeah, it's Rocket League. Um, we do have some quick news. Um, quick thing that I thought was funny. Uh, Crytek is suing Star Citizen, yet again affirming this game will never release. <sighs> yeah. Uh, the too long didn't read. I'll just say it real quick. They had two games on the same engine, and it was against their terms. That's it. And then they switched from Crytek to the Amazon engine, and was against uh, well, again a breach of contract. It's all it is. It's a breach that, contract. That doesn't. Yeah, it, it's it's what it comes I'm, down I'm to. I'm going to leave that alone. Um, one that I thought was really interesting, and I'm just going to go ahead and tell everyone the source of this news was ESPN. Um, the mm -hmm. NBA as we talked about before, is sponsoring an NBA 2K17 E-League. Um, something they're doing for advertising is during the e-sports competitions, 
in the arenas that the game is taking place, like the actual digital arena, they are selling sponsorship spots. So the marquees in the game will have sponsors. The patches on the jerseys will be from sponsors. So they're actually selling sponsorship ads in the game to help fund the league. The, so this is really cool. I really love this idea. Uh, it's worked in standard sports. Uh, I just, I don't, I hope the developers don't shove this stuff in your face, right? So if the camera conveniently will zoom in on the sideboard during like a, a timeout or whatever, just to show the sponsor logo, like that would be, that would be really shitty. Like if for some reason, camera placement, those who can't see it he's pushing a monster can very far up to the front for for some reason i mean and then knocking stuff over when he goes back is that yeah. logo visible okay good um like if somebody were to do like really shitty product placement and make sure it's the front and center of your game uh because they're giving you a bunch of money um that would be a really shitty thing to do and it would actually break immersion in the game now if it was just there and happens to be part of the scene, whether or not you notice it, that would be a really great way to do that. And that's that's what I hope they do. So I think it's going to be the latter, which is kind of what we hope for, because what's happening is they're not putting this in the main game. This is only going to be part of the esports end of the game. So okay. what that means is just where they already have their sponsors that paid to be in the game originally, they're going to overlay that with the esports sponsor. That makes sense. So I think it's a cool thing. Yeah. Uh, Rocket League, I think, actually would work great for this. They already yes. do it to promote their own stuff. They start putting some of their sponsors on there. It'd be great. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's an awesome way to bring in revenue. And like I've been saying, leave it to the sports owners in sports leagues to understand how to do this stuff. Yeah. I think them injecting themselves into the esports arena, while they may not last, they're going to bring in a lot of really good things that has worked in the sports area that will work in the esports area. I, I think the really the best way uh, to make esports commercially viable is to have a, a way to digitally deliver you uh, $12 beers and $14 hot dogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the only, the I, only I've way. I've been to NBA games where it's like, oh, you want a uh, big can of Bud Lights? That'll be eight bucks, sir. Fuck. <laughs> and really, because it's Bud Light, somebody should be paying you to take that. I'm not an elitist when it comes to Bud Light. I'm okay with it, but yeah, I, I am. Ugh. I'm absolutely an elitist. But that was that, and hopefully, I hope that league works. I don't think it's going to get a lot of eyes, but I hope it makes enough money to survive a little bit. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and and I, I'm surprised it's um, you know uh, NBA doing this first i really could see madden taking over this space if the nba pulls it off correctly so the difference is madden already has its own league that's not ran by the nfl the nba is the most progressive of the sporting of the sporting um things god yeah. damn it i blanked but yeah so i <laughs> yeah that's, that's why true. it's coming out of the nba is they're the really progressive one now um really dangerous this game has been out for a while. Well, I say a while is in a, a year or two or three years. Either way, 2015. Um, this game is getting updates in a way that is very stealthy. No one knows it's coming. And then, oh my God, it creates such a buzz because it's fucking cool. The, the way they've been releasing Elite Dangerous updates is so goddamn. Uh, so... They, they first introduced these aliens by, you know, releasing their, their expansion pack that lets you take rovers down onto a planet. Um, and somebody said, hey, what the fuck is this? Because originally you would find, you know, nothing. Nothing super interesting or out of place. And somebody found a, like, a scaly, almost living creature. It looks like alien tech. And everyone's like, what the fuck is this? And then stuff started happening around it. And then there were ships and... And now, uh, the aliens are actually attacking starbases. Uh, a few starbases are being attacked at a time. The, uh, the affected areas are slowly spreading out. And your missions now change. Instead of people saying, oh yeah, could you deliver like 27 pounds of tea over here? Because I really like our tea. Um, it's now, okay, 
These people are dying. You have to get them off the station and to this rescue ship out in orbit immediately because we just got bombed by the aliens. It's such a cool evolution because it's literally really cool. Two months ago, people were forming squad parties to try to kill these things. Yeah. And fi- once that was once someone figured out how to do it. Yeah. And then now all of a sudden without knowing this isn't like, hey, here's an update, everyone. Look what we're doing. It was all of a sudden what the fuck's happening in the game? Yeah. What is this? It was you, if you were a part of this affected star base, you launch out, or you enter the game. Um and shit's on fire around you. There are lights, there are explosions, uh, there are, you know, klaxon sirens all around you. Everything's burning, and you're like, what the fuck? So you you get out and you launch, and this space station that you've been docked in while you're logged off just got fucking trashed the entire time you were gone. Uh, there are some stations that are under attack, so you can actually see the attacks play out. It is really cool shit. Um... Elite Dangerous, uh, Frontier is taking the living game world thing very, very seriously. I haven't seen uh, this style of living world in a game since um, Lion's Arch was destroyed in Guild Wars 2, where where they took the main city, right? Like, the biggest city in Guild Wars 2, and they just fucking destroyed it. They just fucking ruined it um, while everyone was there. That was like a main quest or something, wasn't it? That was uh, kind of the culmination of the first, the the first game, not really game, but the um, you know expansion pack zero, the main game before they launched their expansion pack. I want to say is what that was. Um, it was the first big season, is how that culminated. Yeah, so I, I really like what they're doing. Um, there's another. This isn't in our news, um, but. A, um, another game's getting a really cool update. It's uh, Badlands, or not Wildlands, Wildlands. It's getting a Predator update where all of a sudden Predator is going to be in there and hunting you. And uh, Giant Bomb yeah. was talking about this. I'm like, oh my God, they're right. Just imagine if that update happened like this. Like you're in there playing uh, Wildlands with your buddies, just killing people. And all of a sudden, you got one of your friends like, hey, you guys see that? Like, what the f- are you talking about? Then all of a sudden, like the Predator's hunting you. You had no clue he's put into the game, and all of a sudden he's in there tracking your ass down. So cool. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, Elite Dangerous. It's a really cool game. And it has VR support, which is kind of cool. Yeah, holy shit, the VR support. Yeah, I want to get a fucking um, ODAS, I think it's called. The flight stick and throttle. I want to get that yeah. for it, because yeah. it'd be really cool. Uh, it works really well with the 360 controller. It does. Uh, it's actually, it's the only game I have... Uh, okay. I only have two games on the Vive that I actually prefer to play in a seat. This yeah, well, because it's a game that you're in a seat. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty immersive. And it's a Hotas, not a Hodas. Thanks for that, Proto, because um, he's got one that Elite has. See, um, Elite's cool uh, in VR because um, the whole interface is look-based. So yes. depending on where you're looking uh, will be what screen is currently active. So if you want to, you know check out your contacts. You would actually look to your left at the computer, which will light up and a screen will, will pop in front of you like a holographic screen. And then you can use your controller to control stuff on this on that monitor. And then look over to the right and you've got your loadout. So cool. And that's the key part. It's not completely look controlled. It's look, to make this your active window. Yes. Then use your controller. It, honestly, the way Elite has a, a few problems in VR, uh, because it wasn't built for VR, but it has made the transition better than any other non-VR game I've seen yet. It's just perfect. Oh, I almost... It's not perfect, but it's really fucking it's, good. It is really good. Oh, one thing. Um, when you play Elite Dangerous, if you want full immersion, especially in VR, do not use Discord. Don't use Skype. Don't use Mumble. Don't use external voice chat. Use the comm system inside the game because it will apply voice filters so it actually sounds like ship-to-ship communication. Also, you can get fucked up and you can blow your ship up. Uh, when people damage you, it'll actually put static onto the comm lines. It's really, really I, cool. I do like the, the way they do the communication in game. And that's something I think... I love Discord. I think that what it does for gaming and allowing you to feel like part of a community without being there is amazing. Yeah. But there are some games... That are just better with in-game comms. Yeah. Like okay. Siege. Siege, I think, is awesome with in-game. Well, what well, could be. Um, they do something where they allow you to talk to your team when you're dead. 
Yeah. But some of the old style, like Search and Destroy with COD, you had to be in game. You couldn't be doing a party chat. And when you died, if you were mid sentence, they only heard half your sentence. Yeah. That's really cool. That's fantastic. That's really immersive. Um, so yeah, don't don't use Discord and Elite Dangerous. Use the ship to ship communications. Really cool stuff. Uh yeah, yeah. It's I, I need a Hotas. That's all it's coming down to. This game is probably pulling me back in. Uh speaking of Rainbow, you did bring that up. Uh there's a big update coming to Rainbow. Um there's moving the server side to start ticking at 60 frames a second opposed to 30. Uh, this is believed to be able to fix a lot of the Ubi issue where it's, oh, I, I swear I shot him first. Some of this is legit issue. So they're fixing server side. Should okay. Cool. Uh, Rockstar has put Red Dead Redemption 2 content in GTA. This was discovered by the same people who discovered the aliens, the alien mission by data mining. Hmm. So there's a revolver. That'd be cool. Cool. Um, I like when they do that kind of stuff. Um, here is something I found really interesting. Take two is making an indie publishing wing. And I want to specify real fast. Indie is a very broad gamut. You have people who are making their very first game that are indie. And then you have the indie devs that they're focusing on, which are, this is the former co-creator of Halo who doesn't want to be under a AAA anymore. He wants to do his own thing. They are seeking established personnel who want to do their own projects. Hmm. So I think this could be a really cool creative thing because these guys are well-versed. They know what they're doing. And now they're getting liberty to do what they want. It's similar to what fucking Death Stranding's going through, only hopefully not batshit insane. Because, yeah, that, that game's... Uh, some of the guys on there are like the Halo co or the Halo co creator is there. Uh, some of the guys who brought you uh, Fallout New Vegas are there. Obsidian is there. Well, that that's who I met th by that. Uh, there's some really big name game creators that are on this re are going to be going through this publisher. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I hmm. like having this kind of studio. Yeah. Hey. It'll, it'll be interesting. I know this wasn't on our news, but uh, uh, Kojima, I think you read this, um, actually released some information about Death Stranding. Oh? Yeah. Did he say that he was on acid whenever he came up with the screenplay that was shown? He, so the recent trailer, I, I watched it. I was like, what the fuck is this? Kojima, you're totally off the rails. Konami was right to keep you chained up. What the fuck are you doing? Uh, and when he gave his explanation, I said, oh, Okay, this trailer now makes a little bit more sense. It's still kind of fucking weird, but it makes more sense. Um, said uh, he wants to get um, fail states out of games. Um, so when you die, you don't die. You don't say, oh, well, you fucked that part up. Let's go back in time. Uh, instead, you die and your character goes to a, a metaphorical... Uh, not hell, but you go to a different place. And you've got a different style of gameplay while you're dead. Um, and you can fail and go to a different layer. Uh, and essentially it's, it's just layers of life that you're, you're progressing through. And every time you fail, you go to a different one. Uh, so it's a way to, um, and he said there, sometimes you can affect things outside from within death or something, but it makes sense when you watch the trailer and you realize, oh shit, he totally got his shit wrecked and then he drowned and then he appeared on a beach and he ate a baby or something. Um, and it yeah, makes... you're kind of glossing over one of the biggest fucked up things in there. What is going on with the goddamn baby? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, but I, I imagine he'll, he'll do something. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really interesting. I'm actually I went from being like I, I was super hyped and I saw the trailer and I was unhyped. I was like, oh Jesus, Ko Kojima, what what the fuck are you doing? Um, and now I'm back to being hyped again because it looks like he's got actual gameplay tied directly into the story, which is really fucking cool. So the concept of layers of death, no fail states are really cool, really novel idea. Yeah. That said. It's still fucking batshit insane, and I'm still holding to my guns that him being held in check is what made good games. I'm going to stand by that and hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong because this game's batshit insane we'll and have to awesome. See. It'd be great. Oh, but. it's it's. I will. 
I will predict, yes, it will be batshit insane. Yes, the story will be almost completely uncomprehensible, but it'll be fun. And we won't have any idea why. The first two things are already known. It's going to be. It's the, will the game be fun? Will the game be enjoyable? That is hopefully. Because I'm not going to lie. If the game makes no fucking sense and it's still fun, I don't care. I'll play it. But we'll see. Yeah. Uh, PUBG uh, got a little bit of headlines where um, Player Unknown himself was pretty much saying, hey, there's no IP laws for games. And I- I'm going to say it blanket, but then he goes into some better <laughs> words with it. Pretty much, hey, we should probably look at getting some IP regulation in games. And it wasn't the, hey, they're copying off of me. He acknowledges that games evolve. They take the same concept. But his big thing is don't copy my fucking game. Don't make it a clone. Like what was going on with some of the Chinese games, like the Terminator 2 one. Yeah. That. yeah. He never called out Fortnite. And from the way he was arguing it, it sounds like Fortnite wouldn't be really what he's talking about. There's content, and it sounds like he wasn't necessarily upset with the idea of shared, like, hey, it's the same style of game. He was, this is my game. This so, I, I read this, and, and yeah, he didn't, he didn't call out Fortnite, and uh, Fortnite would fall into the, if you're going to make a game similar to mine, put a twist on it, which it, it does. Um, it, it seems, so, so two things. One, it seems like whining. Um, two, Welcome to the fucking games industry, pal. Do you know how many goddamn copies of Call of Duty and and fucking Grid and Dirt and Mario and Sonic and all this shit has been made by... I mean, even going back to the fucking Genesis era, man. People were, were making knockoff Sonic and Mario games in China and, and shipping them out. Just because it's how it's been doesn't mean it's how it should be. I totally, totally agree. And until China gets like actual copyright laws, it's going to continue to be that way. But him complaining that people are knocking off his game, and you know there's the undertone of everyone's now making a Battle Royale game. Fuck him. You can't say you invented a genre there are people who have done what you did before mag came out how many years ago no 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 no. you can't even compare those those don't play anywhere the same i i'm still saying i played a lot of mag it does not play like PUBG. i i have played on 100 or, or 64 player uh last man standing servers in unreal tournament Right. It, it was a thing. It just wasn't a codified, this is the whole game thing. And, and I get what he's done. And PUBG is really cool. And, and we all love playing it when it decides to run or when it can run at more than 20 frames per second, which we'll talk about here in a bit. Um, but hey, honestly, welcome to the fucking industry, man. When you make something cool, people are going to copy it. Yes, don't, he- don't expect to, to have that not happen. You have no rights here. And once again, his point is they should be because he makes some really good arguments. Indie guy comes in. Let's say he makes a really cool game. Doesn't sell because no one knows him. AAA publisher sees that game, can clone that game absolutely and make hundreds of million dollars off. Dude, Notch made a clone uh, of, of a game called Infiniminer back in the day. Uh, you know what that game is called? Minecraft. Yeah, and now it's one of the biggest franchises on the planet. How do you think the Infiniminer people feel, right? And once again, you're looking at it as sour grapes. Don't look, don't take the messenger and skew his message. His message is right. Um, yes. There needs to be some form of protection. It, it, it's a sensitive area because you don't want to stifle innovation. But yeah, so, so when something you, is a clone, it should be punished. Uh, like a direct clone, right? And if he can prove, and he, he probably can, right? You could probably download the terminator 2 uh, mobile game and say look this is where they directly copied assets from PUBG. we can sue them now right but you cannot copy a genre yeah you, I agree. you can't uh, you can't copy gameplay mechanics that's already been decided actually um imagine if halo uh if microsoft had the patent on offhand grenade deployment right halo came out and then, you know, very quickly, Red Faction 2, which was a terrible, shitty game, got all this hype because, oh, look, they do offhand grenade deployment, kind of like Halo. How cool is that? I mean, the game was still shit, but the only thing you can claim as Microsoft or Bungie is that, yeah, we kind of made this a thing. Yeah, and like I said, it's, it's, there's going to be fine lines. I just think you have to be willing to find those. Because, example, uh, Perfect Dark. 
I don't think was an exact clone of GoldenEye. There were some things to it. The question is, is there enough differentiation? I, it, well, I mean, that probably, I, w- it, it's a ter- that's actually a really terrible example because they're made by the same exact people. No, no, but I'm <laughs> saying, ignore that. I'm just saying those two type of games where I think there would be enough distinction that it wouldn't be hit because I don't think that's what you're trying to combat. But what's, what's the too close, Mark? What's it, too close? That's what I'm saying would need to be established. Yeah, it's, just because gets, you think it's hard doesn't mean it shouldn't happen. Yeah, it's... it's I think it's a really fuzzy area that could really, really, really be abused. It could, but at the same time, you know, people how, can get abused because is, it's not there. And is, the people getting abused by it would be the small guys. Is is Terraria enough of a clone of Minecraft? Is Trove enough of a clone of, of Minecraft with some mods layer on top? Um, you know, is is uh Far Cause those are close. Is uh not Far Cause. Um Far Cry? No, what am I thinking of? Just Cause. Uh, you know, are the newer Just Cause games, is it is it close enough to uh to GTA? Is is Assassin's Creed uh, a clone of a very popular game called Taking a Shit? Um is that close enough that that a you know the pile of shit can sue Ubisoft for that? Uh, probably. About the new Assassin's Creed game is great. <laughs> shit. It's great. It's it's, it's everyone is loving it. Very middling reviews. Um, not from what I've seen. It's getting solid reviews. I've I've only seen middling reviews. But either way, um, IP lol. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Um, you did hit it. This uh, PUBG Xbox One performance. Yeah. So I watched this video, and it's not it's not like a, an across the board. This game runs at ten frames per second. Um. The Xbox One version of Battlegrounds, um, depending on where you're at, and it's especially apparent when uh, parachuting in, it will get down to 15 frames per second. It'll hover around 20 to 24, uh, but it does not look like it plays well. And according to people, it doesn't control well. Uh, The Xbox One X actually has the same issue. Uh, Just it's less apparent because it's a more uh, powerful system. But um, the max FPS in this game is 30 across um the the xbox port whether it's the the x or non x um it's it's getting blasted for performance issues which um anyone who's played PUBG should know that performance issues are just the name of the game you know player unknowns battlegrounds where 30 frames is actually all right so my question is on this i didn't get to look into it too much are they <clears throat> They're running on the Xbox One, Xbox One X, but are they using the uh, 1.0 build that's going to release in a few days, or are they using something else? Because the um, 1.0 build has a lot of performance enhancements. I mean, I, I honestly don't know. Um, but this is what happens when, when you release a game that's not finished. And I, I bought it, right? I bought it. I'm not going to say it's not finished. It's just it's, not it's, optimized. <laughs> it's not a complete game. They even say this is early access. It'll it'll be full release sometime next year. No, it's going to be early. Yeah, it's going to be full time release in four days. That's that's when they're doing the one Yeah. Okay. I thought it was. I thought it was early 2018. No, no, it's uh 12:20. Okay. Um, but you know, it's it's still you know as of as of this moment, it's still an early access game. <laughs> Uh, but that, that's kind of even more damning, right? If you're four days from your 1.0 and the game still runs like this, that's, that sucks. That really sucks for people. And your first impression playing a game shouldn't be, wow, this runs like shit. Yeah, that's where I'm really worried about the one launch and what's going to happen with that. Okay, um, Vospec times in. It is going to be next year for the Xbox. Okay. So they'll have time to get that fixed out. Yeah. Because you have to think, what they were focusing on is PC. PC, yeah. oh, you, absolutely. you can get away with more on PC. Absolutely. Um, that said, yeah, I, I have faith they'll get it. They'll get it together. That's a big enough game with a big enough following that they'll put time to get that right. Yeah, yeah it's just... It's, it's so painful. It's so painful. And every time I play PUBG, and, and granted, I have not played the test servers. I have seen some streams that looks better. Um... But every time I load up PUBG, I think, holy shit, this would be so much fun if it would actually run decently. You see, I've never really had issues. It's ran well for me. 
So I I have played on five thousand dollar graphics cards. I've played on five hundred dollars graphics cards. I've played on systems with one hundred and twenty two gigs of RAM. I've played on systems with sixteen, uh, and I never get great performance out of the game. It's not you know unplayable, but when I go and launch something like Fortnite, which is a lot less technically beautiful, uh, I wouldn't ever call PUBG beautiful, but you know it's more realistic and fortnite is definitely more cartoony different different aesthetics entirely but fortnite's easier to run uh fortnite feels better it runs better i never have these types of performance issues i've had complete server issues with fortnite what really? i've never had with PUBG. like i couldn't even see friends on i couldn't do anything the only time i've tried to play it i couldn't do it I, I have never experienced that. Now, now, do you have Adam's problem where your router is 15 years old? No, because I was having the issue, RS, Josh, we, there's a group of us, and we couldn't game up. Granted, later, they got on together, but I couldn't get in. I, I'll, I'll give you that Epic's network uh, is lacking is the nicest thing I can say about it. Really, they should just get rid of their fucking stupid launcher and tie their shit to Steam like everybody else, but... You know, it's epic, and they don't, they have never made a video game before. So, um, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll see. I hope they do it right. I would love to see this game succeed on consoles because I think it'll sell like fucking hotcakes on consoles. Um, couple more headlines Nintendo has sold 10 million Switches. Not really shocked. Uh, I, I know, I know we mark this as, you know, just the headline, but, I want to talk about this because there have been no fewer than five articles I read this week about Nintendo and how they basically just fucking owned the whole year. Let's let's talk about this. So this time last year, everyone was saying, holy shit, Nintendo's dying. It's it's all over. The Wii U is bleeding money. We even said on this podcast, if they have another year like they did this year, Nintendo's gone. They would have because yeah, it, they would have. everyone was going off this false narrative of all the Wii made money. They weren't looking at how much money the Wii U lost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it was a painful, painful year in 2016 for Nintendo. Um, but this year, holy fucking shit. All right. They released the switch, which they can't, they are just now getting th their supply problems fixed because they just flew off the shelves. You couldn't buy one for months, uh, which, you know, it, it's typical Nintendo fashion. That's not necessarily a good thing, but it's nice that their systems were selling well uh, and outpacing their project projections. Um, they launched with, uh, you know, one of the best system sellers you could launch with, right? Not Wii Sports levels of system seller, uh, but Breath of the Wild was fantastic. It's a great game. It's fantastic to sit down on your couch and play it. You can take it anywhere and play it. Um, it works to the strengths of the Switch really, really well. Uh, and then, right on its heels, they launch Mario Kart, right? They they revamped the Mario Kart they put on the Wii U, made it a little bit better, tuned up some stuff, and now you can take it with you on the go. Uh, then, right after that, they, they throw out Splatoon 2. Uh, and then there was a dry spell, right? After Splatoon 2, nothing happened, and then they dropped the bombshell that was Mario Odyssey. They just fucking wrecked this year. They didn't delay any first party games, which is not Nintendo at all. Um, people are still buying this system, even though it's got a beta version of an operating system and virtually no online whatsoever. I still don't call it beta. Just because I cannot, it's simple, it doesn't mean it's beta. I cannot back up my save games. It is a beta version of an operating system. If my Switch dies, I lose everything. No, 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 no. That's not beta. That's how it is. They don't want you to be getting in there and fucking with save I games. I don't think that's it. I think, honestly, they just don't know how to do this. No, you can get the games moved and such. Yes, you can move the games, but you cannot move the save data. Yes, you can. That's what I'm saying. You can work with them, and they, you can do oh, it oh, once. They yes. allow it to happen once, and that's it. Yeah. This is not something that's a shortcoming. They don't want it done right now. So, and it's it's the thing that people have been asking for forever. And and they're starting to implement these little things here and there to make life better uh, for the Switch. But, you know, people are still buying this without a clear answer to what does Nintendo's online look like? Because right now, it looks like a fucking stupid squid uh, with, you know, two, uh, two audio input jacks and one audio output um, hooked to a fucking phone with the absolute worst online app I've ever seen for anything. Uh, and I've used Uplay before. So yeah, I've shot out a tweet earlier this week pretty much calling out that, yeah, this is supposed to be charged starting next year and it's yeah. only Splatoon. Yeah. And that said, the voice comms on it, I could never get to work, ever. 
I tried. I couldn't get it to work. Yeah, it's it's bad. It's just bad. Uh, but but for some reason, me and everyone else fucking loves this device. It is a fantastic companion gaming machine. Uh, as a second uh, console, or as the only console to a PC gaming counterpart, it's perfect. If you have if you have a PS4 or an Xbox One. Um, Getting a Switch is the next logical step because it, it solves your portability problem. Uh, it's got great first-party games. It stands alone. Uh, and especially if you're playing on PC, it's the greatest thing ever because you can just walk away with it and play your games on the go. Honestly, it's getting a lineup to where I don't. it has to be considered a companion. It's getting there. It I really mean, is. If you like shooters, they even have Doom on it now. They do. I haven't played it. But I, from they, what I hear, it runs pretty well. They have Doom. They're getting Wolfenstein. I mean, it's it's turning into a full fledged console. It's not what everyone has always thought of Nintendo for the last two gen. Yeah, yeah. They they fucking wrecked this year. Uh, they they just they tore it up, and frankly, they deserve it. I love the Switch, uh, and I'm actively looking for more games to buy on it. By the way, I have not even come close to getting everything in Mario Odyssey, and that's the only thing I've played since it came out. Um, I haven't played the Switch. In really? Wow. Um, what I, do you do on the train? I listen to stuff. Metro? Let me some Mini Metro. All right. I'll um, give you a pass for Mini Metro. But my big thing is I've gotten to 50. I'm actually at, like, Mark. Um, I'll get there. I'll get to the 500 mark, which is essentially that's when the official, the actual end. Yeah. Um, but no rush. I'll get there when I get there. I've gotten through the main story. I've seen the 250. So I'm good enough. Yeah. Yeah. I I it's love it because I can I can pick it up. I can get a moon or two uh, in a bus ride and put it away. And, and also, this fabulous 8-BitDo gamepad works to complete with your Nintendo Switch. That's the 8-BitDo SF30 Pro gamepad for only $50. Buy one today. I will say, I think using that on the bus would be awkward, though. Oh, no, I don't use this on the bus. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, when I take my Switch portable, I use it as the Switch. Joy-Cons hooked to the side and everything. But uh, when I play Mario Kart in the office without a dock and I have the kickstand up, oh, you better bet I'm using that guy. Okay, I'll get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. Um, I'll let you take this next bit. I don't know what this is. Uh, it's, uh, I'm looking at this. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, did you... You never played this. No. You never played Medieval. Okay. Um... It was fun. It was a, a classic game that came out on the PS2, cult classic status, uh, pretty, pretty good fan community, nothing major, uh, but it was a fun game for that era. Um, and they have announced a medieval PS4 remake, so I'm looking forward to this. It was actually a really fun game back, back in the day. Hmm. Yeah, there's only one remake on my radar for PS4, Battle Colossus. I'm not going to play it until I play that remake. Not Final Fantasy VII? No, because I don't think that... I don't know if that'll come out on the 4. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, and the final bit of news we have is New Zealand is uh, having some loot box information... Or uh, <clears throat> rulings, I should say. Ah, and the rulings... Are different. But it, let's see. I misread that. Do not meet the legal definitions of gambling. Is there stance on loot boxes? Yes. Because I'm assuming what they're going off of is, hey, you're still getting something. Um, not necessarily. Let me, let me look into this. Um, loot box contents can supposedly cannot be traded for cash. They do not constitute gambling. So that's a really weird way to look at it. It, so, it mirrors what uh, the ESA and ESRB have said before. Uh, so because there's no cash associated with them, they cannot be regulated under existing gambling laws. So that that's interesting. Um, we'll either have to see new laws written, it, well, for New Zealand, right? Uh, the states, I don't think there's been anything too serious against loot boxes except for uh, the representative from Hawaii uh, going after loot boxes. But honestly, it's it's cooled down some. EA is 
is backing off a little bit. I'm sure they'll continue to fuck up the Battlefront franchise as much as they can, as hard as they can. But it's cooled down. But it, it that's cooled down. That could be also the actual fact they're starting to draft it. Yeah. So yeah. I think more in like two, three months we'll see. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I don't know. It'll it'll be interesting. I I would like to see uh, a little bit more. Um, self-restraint in this industry when it comes to loot boxes and Skinner boxes and in various psychological tricks to make money uh, because it is pretty shitty, right? Uh, back in the day when, you know, Night Trap and uh, Mortal Kombat were on the evening news, freaking out parents everywhere because you could pull out a man's spinal cord and it was bloody fucking awesome. Um, you know, Congress had hearings. They brought in people from Sega and Nintendo uh, to square off uh, on a, the floor of Congress and, you know, tell everybody why they, why Congress shouldn't make laws uh, banning these types of video games or regulating them. And, and so what they came up with was the ESRB, uh, a joint effort by all video game publishers and console manufacturers to say, hey, we are going to voluntarily uh, give up our games for ratings and there will be an industry standard rating stamp on the front of our boxes and a list of reasons on the back uh and this is an independent ratings review board um that's that's what the esrb did that's that's how they came into being uh loot boxes i think we're gonna need some some major a major push by big industry players to get this shit sorted out or else somebody is going to sort our shit out for us. I don't see how you can do the MS. I mean, granted, just because I can't see it doesn't mean it can't, but I don't see how you would get an MSRB style thing for loot boxes. It's like, is it cosmetic? Is it gameplay? And I mean, that's the only big indicator I can think of. Well, you, you could even, I mean, it could start as easy as the ESRB on the back of the box saying, uh, you know, um, gambling mechanics or loot oh, boxes. Oh, you're saying or, to actually work it into the ESRB? Yeah, yeah. That, okay, that, okay. That's the most logical place to put regulations like this, or or not not even regulation, but just come out and say what's in your game, right? Like cosmetic loot boxes or or uh, gameplay loot boxes, right on the back, or or uh, you know gambling things, or we're trying to fuck your brain out of its money, uh, or or some put something on the back of the box to just come out and say you won't have a good time with this game unless you drop you know four thousand dollars to unlock everything in Battlefront Two. So the big thing with the ESRB, it was decided <clears throat> upon by the companies that they would do it. Yes, they're not going to be willing to say, hey, this game has gambling mechanics. Unless, uh, unless um, there is an even greater evil, which would be the federal government coming down and saying, either you do this or we will do it for you, which is exactly how the ESRB was made in the first place. Yes, but the more and more I see this, the more I wonder, why is everyone afraid of the government coming in and saying, hey, this is actually gambling? Because it's usually when the government does anything it's it's messy it's overhanded it comes with a lot of red tape it's expensive for companies to comply with it uh, there's there's a lot of a lot of negative that comes with that now with industry self-regulation it's not always perfect right uh for instance grand theft auto san andreas should have never been rated adults only ever the only way you could access that content uh, was with a cheat device, and if you hacked the game to get it san andreas had no sex scenes in it whatsoever unless you hacked the game so the fact that the ESRB said adults only, that was a fuck up. But can you imagine a government agency responsible for rating video games and how much they would have fucked up everything? What's the difference between having the ESRB is an organization that rates it versus government's ESRB, which would be rating games. One, the same people in the same room doing the same job, only paid by the government instead of paid by the industry. Um, because one operates as a government entity the other operates as a an industry soundboard but it's still the same people in the same room not doing necessarily the same, the same people not necessarily okay the same people. but it, you get what i'm saying though the job doesn't change now getting the regulations there might take longer to get them there i understand agree but there's not oh everyone's always afraid of the government coming in when sometimes i'm not thinking it's a terrible thing when it comes to the gambling issue I would like to see the government come in and scare some stuff up. Um, the ESRB is covered. This would be gambling, uh, gambling regulation. 
I'm 100% okay with them coming in for that because you know what? That would scare the shit out of them. That would clear some of this up right then. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see what happens with this. Uh, in any case, I think this scare with Battlefront 2 and EA uh, and the massive backlash is going to make companies as a whole kind of back off on super predatory loot boxes. I'm sure they'll be back. This isn't going to be the last uh, time we see it. Um, but people are really, really gun shy about directly fucking with their customers, uh, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. Don't fuck with your customers. Always, a, always a good sentiment. Yeah. Yeah. And usually. With that, I think that's about all we got for news. Unless you got any other little tidbits to throw in there. Um, no, uh, other than, um, perfect dark was infinitely the better game compared to golden eye. I, actually agree with that yeah all right same game better stuff added on anyway that said run down so for those of you here live right now you could always jump over to our 72 pc podcast channel on youtube which is 72 pin connector i don't know why i said that earlier um you can check out all of our old videos if you miss some you can check out some of the new content we have up there we have a new dark souls video up there yes we said it um yeah take a drink if you're over there watching this right now, live every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, we do this thing on Twitch. You can find us at 72 Pin Connector on Twitch. Jump in, be in chat, get involved. It's all fun. Um, if you just want to listen to us because you think our faces are a little ugly, uh, you could either grab the RSS feeds off of 72pinconnector.com, which also has links to all of our other content, or you could just find us on Google Store, the iTunes Store, just grab po- any podcast app and find us there. Um, and finally, if you want to give us some content to talk about or tell us what we're doing really, really bad, you can tweet at us at, at 72 PC podcast. And with that, do we have anything to say after we, that? We do. Um, <clears throat> Touristin, thank you for the follow on Twitch. Uh, and if you all want to follow us on Twitch, you will get notifications when we go live. Or, you know, if you don't want notifications, you can turn those off. But I know I do. notifications and come join us because we're awesome. That's true. You could. Sure. And you could talk about Dark Souls all the time. Or Rocket League. Or Dark Souls. Or Rocket League. Or Player Unknown's Rocket League. And with that, I think that's all we're gonna call it. So until next week, on. See you everybody. And talk Dark Souls. Dark Souls.